Man, I got a lot of Christmas movies to watch. But which one should I watch first? Oh, I know. This is Saving Christmas, a award-winning movie. What I mean by award-winning, I mean it, it won four Razzies. One for worst actor, worst director, worst screenplay, and of course, worst screen combo. And the screen combo, in case you're wondering, was Kirk Cameron and his ego. Uh, yeah, Saving Christmas is an awful movie. It was, it, I think it still is, the one of the lowest rated movies of all time on IMDb and a bunch of other review sites. Nobody liked this movie. Nobody. It's a movie trying to appeal to a very small demographic and convince people that this is the way Christmas is supposed to be celebrated and that there's a war in Christmas as well. For some reason, that aspect gets thrown under the, the, the water, I guess, under the uh, fake tree, if you will. And uh, it's all hosted by Kirk Cameron, who is an awful actor. Like, he, I mean, you think I'm bad at communication? He can barely say words without having giant pauses and stuttering over himself. And I love hot chocolate. You know, what are they going to do next? Tell us hot chocolate's bad for us? That the, the druids invented it? Sorry to burst your bowl there, Kirk Cameron, but hot chocolate is not good for you. It tastes good, but it's full of sugar. And I'll admit, hot chocolate is pretty good. And in case you're wondering, the druids now invent it, because apparently the druids are Celtic. But it was invented in Mesoamerica, so by a different religion that is in Christianity, which I know you love so much. But I'm sure if you had more time in this movie, you would explain some weird reason why hot chocolate is somehow uh, about Christianity. Because this is what the whole movie's about. Taking objects that have really nothing to do with Christianity at all, and you're just like, actually, it guess it kind of is. And that's the whole movie. So after that lovely uh, speech about hot chocolate, we get the company intro, which is really weird to see. Usually these are at the beginning of the movie, not after a clip and then showcase it. Whatever, this movie doesn't make any sense. We get the first of many pointless spiels from Kirk Cameron, where he narrates over this guy who's supposed to be Saint Nick. He obviously looks nothing like the actual guy, but don't tell that to Kirk Cameron. Uh, the whole movie is basically just really dumb spiels that make no sense, and this one is about his obsession with telling a story because I don't know why but he's like this is how a story is told now this is what a story usually goes but now here it's like this isn't a story no one's gonna retell the saving Christmas story it's boring it's just two guys talking in a car for most of the movie and I'm not even joking that's most of the movie we get to see Kirk Cameron's amazing diverse Christmas party where I guess he invited everybody he knew we also see Kirk Cameron's sister who if I had to guess what her name is it would be Karen and Kirk Cameron's also an idiot. You really stepped it up this year. You got Santa Claus. Where'd you find him? What do you, what do you have to pay a guy like that? It's Uncle Bill. <laughs> Maybe it was the beard. So this guy here is going to tell us stories about how he's, that are supposed to be accurate and true, but he came and tell the difference between Santa and some guy that he's probably related to. Like, I don't understand it. Just not even a good-looking Santa. He, you can see his beard, and he looks like he's drunk off his ass. But according to this, this fools Kirk Cameron thinking either A, it's a real Santa, making him really stupid, or B, it's some professional Santa. Knowing them, they're probably rich off of the... probably stealing money from people, but you know. Everyone's enjoying Christmas, except for this guy, Gordon Freeman. Actually, his name is Christian. You get it? He's supposed to represent their average Christian, and that's why his name is Christian. Very clever there, Kirk Cameron. Or should I say this guy, because this guy here is actually the director and writer of this movie. And he doesn't like Christmas, and for some reason, he looks at the, mo the world like it's a horror movie. Where some see youthful joy, others see phony smiles and spoiled bread. Also, this random guy here starts talking about really stupid shit, and so he literally just gets droned out. Because he's such a uh, annoying character. This is, I guess, a character you're supposed to like. But, like, I guess it's a bad thing that he's zoning him out. But, quite literally, I'm just glad to be able to hear his annoying-ass spiel. <laughs> yes, this is how it's actually in the movie. So, Christian here thinks it's a good idea. Also, they show their license plate, which I didn't even know was even allowed. He's, but Christian thinks it's a good idea to just sit in his car to get away from the party. Because he just can't stand annoying peak co-workers 
but Kirk Cameron, obviously not getting the sign, decides that's a good idea to go in the car and explain why he is all wrong. You see, uh, Gordon Freeman here has a problem with the uh, consumerism nature of Christmas and how little it really has to do with the New Testament of the Bible and how he wishes they spent more money on helping other people, which is what the New Testament's all about, but don't tell that to Christians. Uh, how he wishes they did that, but, you know, instead of uh, buying presents that the kids don't even need. But, of course, Kirk Cameron responds to all of this. You're all wrong. But, so bad this movie. but everything you just said. Oh, if you didn't get that, the whole spiel, there are some things I guess you could argue are wrong, but this, that, that includes the stuff about saying that we, they should spend more money helping other people. But he, but Kirk Cameron, remember, he said everything he said was wrong, including some parts about helping other people. So fuck you, Kirk Cameron, and your money hoarding ass. You had to pick one valuable thing in all of the decorations around your house at Christmas time, it would probably be your nativity set. No, beat my animatronic Santa. Thank you very much. Actually, I actually have two of them. They're really cool. This one even comes with a little British boy. Give me some presents, Santa! No, you've been very naughty! So, Kirk Cameron decides to explain the uh, nativity scene to a guy who's already pretty Christian. His lady name is quite literally Christian about how there's a cloth, and that represents the cloth that Jesus was born in, and he also died in the same exact cloth! Now, keep in mind, none of this is in the Bible, so Kirk Cameron just literally pulled all this information out of his ass. There's nothing about this cloth, and he obsessed over the cloth. It is not an important element at all to the story, but he does not shut up about the cloth. It's also nothing, it's nothing to do with the Christmas stuff. What, you mean the cloth from the fucking tree? I don't get it. So, I guess everyone else is thinking, like, why do you waste so much time talking about a cloth that has really nothing to do with anything, and it's really not that important? This, for some reason, really gets Christian happy and excited about Kirk Cameron's vision. I gotta admit, I never saw the whole swaddling cloth thing. Unfortunately, we have to go back to this party where we get one of the worst scenes in the movie. That's just a lot. Basically, anything to do with these characters here is the worst scene. And they go on about conspiracy theories, which you would think it's a joke, but I don't think it is supposed to be a joke. I think it's like all the thing, everything they say is supposed to be legitimate. Keep in mind, Kirk Cameron doesn't like war and religion. Not religion, Christmas. Because I don't know where this war comes from because nobody that I know or even even quote-unquote liberals, I, they don't care. They like Christmas. Everyone likes Christmas. What the fuck are you talking about? Now, for some reason, this scene is terribly dubbed. Like, it's pretty clear whatever he, they're saying is not what they're saying in, on the actual set. The priest said, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. They're already taking away our freedom of speech. You know why the Pope really stepped down? Da Vinci Code, right? Wrong. There's a whole Picasso Code. I'm actually still working on that one. Come on, man. They got fluoride in our water. I'm saying that's got to cause at least Asperger's. What the fuck? There is like two points I gotta mention. This, the last one really fucked my head there. The first point, the Pope sat down because of all the, the child molestation, I thought. Not Da Vinci Code. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? And second of all, fluoride causes Asperger's syndrome? Are you fucking kidding me? And, yeah, this is the one of the messages you're supposed to take away from this movie. And I don't know if this is supposed to be a conspiracy theory or not, because, like I said, they talk about stuff like war and Christmas. So, either everything they're saying is bullshit or everything they're saying is correct. And I have a feeling that everything they're saying is supposed to be correct. And these characters are just doing it in a funny way because they're scared of people trying to cancel them. But maybe you should be canceled when you think a fluoride causes autism. Are you fucking kidding me? That's very insulting to me. Fuck you, bald guy. Waiting. Okay. What's the chapter? What's the verse? You have a weird, obscure verse in numbers. That's honestly a good point. Most of the stuff that Kirk Cameron's pulled out of his ass has no, like, like a verse or, like, a citation needed. I thought you guys liked your citations, but, hey, if you pull it out your ass, I guess that's good enough. Bro. Bro, look at me. So, Kirk Cameron's next point is probably one of the dumbest ones in the movie. So, you know how the Christmas trees, you know, the whole staple, they are, uh, a... The guy, Christian, quietly says they have nothing to do with Christianity, and he mentions pagan rituals in Winter Solstice, which is where the actual origins of Christmas come from. Spoiler alert. 
But he's like, no, you see, Adam tried to put a fruit back on the tree, but he can't because he ate it. So he tried to put himself on the tree, I guess, or something like that. But Jesus had to do it for him later on. So Jesus going on the cross is like a Christmas tree. Picture all the trees as crosses because the cross is made out of wood. Okay, so did any of that make sense to you? Because it doesn't make any sense to me. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that that is that is pretty cool. Thank you, Gordon Ra Gordon Gordon Ramsay. I don't say Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Freeman. Gordon Freeman. <laughs> hey, Santa. Oh, ho, 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 ho. where's ho, 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 in the Bible? Ho, ho, ho. So they mess up the Santa part so badly. So this is supposed to be Saint Nick, who, like I said, looks nothing like the actual version. Now, of course, the modern-day Saint Nick was with the inspiration for Santa Claus. Not modern-day, the old, he's old as shit, basically, in terms of uh, relativity. But he looks nothing like this, because Santa is based off the guy who looks similar to modern-day Santa, and for some reason he looks like some barbarian here. Uh, this is based off a one story that's kind of been put into legend, where uh, there's a debate in a council about talking about uh, some new ideas about Christianity, and during the, the debate... Uh, Saint Nick slapped somebody, and it wasn't even clear who it was. But here, they're like, no, he went to that bar and beat the shit on this person for dare speaking against it. It was just a heated debate in that in real life. But in, and of course, in Kirk Cameron's version, Santa has to be a, a badass who kills people for dare speaking anything against his faith, which is really stupid. And of course, the Santa part gives us some of the worst acting in the movie. Oh, look who it is! Better? You get that out of your system? Come on, we got work to do. Come on, let's go bless some kids tonight. We've got gifts to give. <laughs> Guy God, is that acting horrible. This guy looks more like a serial killer than what's supposed to represent Saint Nick, who the movie, if you couldn't tell, does a really bad job at interpreting this character. Instead, like I said, instead of focusing on a lot of his good traits, which he has a lot of, is the reason why he became such a popular figure enough to have a whole character based off him. Uh, it focuses on the fact that he beat up a guy one time, which, like I said, it's mostly part of legend how much of that really transcribed. And, of course, in this version, he beats the shit out of him in a bar for no reason, because th he's an asshole, I guess. Like I said, that's not how the, the events went down, and it makes this guy who... Who was actually not a bad person at all. Looks like a complete jackass. So thanks to Kirk Airman for making a person who's a saint look like a jackass. Fuck you. Santa is the man. So after that terrible conversation, it convinced Christian that he was being a humbug for no reason, and he should go out there and dive on the dance floor. In case you're wondering if all the spiel is done, there is even more. Because you see, when you're looking at presents, you're supposed to see a city. And what city? Why, the New Jerusalem, of course! You didn't get that? How'd you not get that? That's so obvious! How'd you not see that? I mean, come on, it's not just a bunch of presents there. It's, it's, it represents Jerusalem! Uh, specifically, it's not just generic, any generic city, it's specifically Jerusalem. I can't even speak, that's how much it makes so much sense. How do you not see it? So Gordon Freeman decides it's a good idea to apologize to his wife since he has been an asshole. Because his, all the points he made before were now invalid, now that he knows the truth taught to him by Kirk Cameron. And how does he showcase his new love for Christmas? While, well, the most obvious thing, of course. I went ahead and just organized a hip-hop dance crew that encompasses all the joy and gospel burst and excitement that I alone as one man just cannot express. No, really, I did. Pick it, DeAndre! We then get the actual worst scene in the movie, the hip-hop dance song. It is awful. In case you didn't know how great of a scene this is, here's the comments from a clip video that this is clipped from, alright? This looks like it was done at gunpoint. 
this definitely felt way longer than five minutes. I love how all the kids clapping look generally confused. My big question is that if it all it took to save Christmas was a hip-hop dance party with Kirk Cameron doing the warm in front of a Christmas tree, did Christmas really need saving? I'm going to put a link to the description for this video so you can read these comments for yourself. This video is important for future generations. I want the kids of 50 years from now to know suffer how I suffered. You're not making Christianity better, you're making hip-hop worse. And thanks, Kirk. You made me cement my belief in and being an atheist even more than I did before. <laughs> this entire movie is real war on Christmas. It's really real. Nightmares actually do come true. 95% of the budget is probably getting the rights to slow the Apple logo on the laptop. That was cringy yet satisfying at the same time. I don't really know what that means, but, you know, I kind of agree. The best part of this by far is the kid in the red shirt. They gave him one job to look excited. He failed miserably. <laughs> okay. Okay, I gotta edit here. So everyone's eating a meal, and Kirk Cameron leaves us on one of the worst notes that any film can end on. His note is, is that consumerism is actually good. Being material is great! ...to the complaint about materialism during Christmas. Sure, don't max out your credit cards or use presents to buy friends. But remember, this is a celebration of the eternal God taking on a material body. So it's right that our holiday is marked with material things. In case you didn't get the point there, is that it's okay to be material because of the Jesus body became material at some point? I don't understand the idea here. I don't even need to quote the New Testament to showcase how wrong it is. Because there are so many passages in just that one uh, book alone that says being rich and having a bunch of goods does not mean you're living the life to your fullest. And according to the New Testament, that's the hardest way to get into heaven is by having too much shit and being too rich. There's a famous quote, It's easier to put a donkey or a horse into the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get into heaven. Because the main goal of the New Testament, or one of them, was to showcase that material goods aren't really that all that cracked up to be. Of course, you can't tell that to these people because they love their material goods. I mean, I like my stuff too, but I'm not going to use scripture to defend it, because you can't. It quite literally says the exact opposite. But Kirk Cameron does so anyway, because Kirk Cameron doesn't care about what makes sense. I came to this movie knowing this was going to be bad, and my expectations were met. It is 0 0.5 out of 5. And now I gotta say, I did laugh my ass off at a couple moments when watching it. And there were some irritating moments, but like most of the movie has really bad pacing, and even though the movie's not that long, it, there was a lot of empty space where characters, like especially Kirk Cameron, and especially Christian, will just be just have a, a bunch of silence where nothing happens. They'll just be staring at each other. It's so awkward. And I, I would play clips of it because it's kind of funny at the same time. But it's it's a movie where even this, if you don't ignore the message, you got nothing of substance. It's two guys singing in a car. Bad lighting, bad effects, bad acting. It's all around bad. It's it's comically bad. It's entertainingly bad. If you're someone like me who likes watching bad, funny, bad movies, this is one of them. It's not up there with the room, per se, but if you like, if you want a bad Christmas movie to watch, I guess, and to make fun of with friends, I guess you can watch it at Christmas. Also, the poster there is the biggest lie ever. There is nothing like that going on in the actual movie. But yeah, thank you for watching Zoom Christmas with me, uh, Kirk Cameron Zoom Christmas. Uh... I hoped that I saved some people from watching this movie, even though I recommend watching it to some people. But yeah, don't watch Saving Christmas at all, especially if you're kids or anything like that. This is not good. If you want to watch a good Christmas movie, watch Claws on Netflix. That's a good movie. But yeah, thank you for watching. I'll continue to do more reviews. If you want more Christmas reviews, let me know. I might be doing them.